Hey, what's going on guys? Chris here from DIYE65E66.com and tonight's video we're going to be doing the back brakes and so I've already done my front brakes so if you're looking for that video go ahead and look on DIYE65E66.com scroll through the videos and it's going to be in the video tab. Now tonight's video again we're going to be doing the back brakes and so what I do if you do not want to use two jack stands, I, I recommend jack stands just for safety but if you want to skimp out on the jack stands, at least jack it up and then do one tire at a time. Which means if you're doing the passenger side, take off that tire, leave this tire on. That's a safety point just in case the car uh, comes down. You're going to have that tire still on with the jack here. Keep it there. And then so we're going to be working on the passenger side first. Now I've replaced the sensor before so I know there's a back brake sensor back here not sure about the uh, driver's side. I don't think so. So I believe you only have one back brake sensor and that's on the passenger side. So let's go ahead and get right into the video here. So before you jack up the car, obviously loosen the nuts and then jack up the car and then take the tire off. So let's do that now and let's look at the brakes. All right, guys, we're looking at the passenger side here, the passenger side rotor. And what we're going to do here is we're going to come down here to the uh, caliper. We're going to look at the caliper here. And I actually, I mean, I've blown through my back brakes. Um, I don't have any, you know, metal on metal yet, but it's it's almost, almost there. So let's take a quick look here. As you can see, my pad is pretty much not there. And uh, let's take a quick overview real quick here. Here's the sensor entering in the back side here. And it goes up right here, and then it eventually comes right up here into the box here. We'll get to that in a little bit here. I'm going to be keeping the same sensor because that is a newer sensor. I replaced that when I got the car, so that's only a couple year old sensor. Um, and my pads did not come with a new sensor, so we're gonna be very careful with that and not break that because we're gonna use that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be very careful and we're gonna back out that sensor there and I'm gonna get that out of the way so I can start working on the uh, caliper, loosening that up and again spreading the uh, pads and getting that off of the rotor. Alrighty guys, so right off the bat, unfortunately my sensor is shoved in there pretty good there. And so, which means the brake pad is kind of compressed on it, so I do not want to break that sensor. So, plan B, I'm going to go on the back side here. And we see my 18 millimeter with my little itty bit extension there. And my breaker bar hanging down below. Now you have two bolts. You have one right here, right where my breaker bar is. One right there. And you got one down there at the bottom, which is really, really dirty, right there. One, two. Those are 18 millimeter. Be very careful of your brake fluid uh, cable here and your sensor cable here. And what I did is I went below right here. I went right, actually, I went underneath that one there. Locked right on to that bolt right there. And then those things are on super tight, guys. So what I did is I made sure that, again, you're going to be going against the normal way to loosen because you're actually loosening on the back side there. So you're going to be actually going like you would actually tighten because you're working against, remember, opposite direction because technically you'd be looking this way and loosening that way. So I took my rubber mallet and I whap, 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 whap that with my breaker bar and it came loose guys again very tightly on there again these brakes probably have never been changed so that is from 2006 just really latched on there again watch your cables let's remove that bolt and then let's remove the one below it alrighty guys and before you pull out both your bolts the upper and lower one go ahead and get a uh, paint can or a box and this one is complimentary of the US, US uh, Postal Service and so after you pull out those bolts you're gonna grab the caliper and you might have to get in from the back side right here, get a flathead screwdriver and kind of loosen the pad off of the rotor just a little bit because it might be compressed on there so hard the caliper might not want to release right away. You might have to jimmy with that a little bit, get those pads um, freed up from the, caliper, uh, from the rotor and then we're going to go ahead and pull that off and we're going to set that right on the box here. and. Uh, we want to be careful again of our uh, cables and wires not to rip those or pull those out. And we're going to set our caliper out of the way right here and we're going to get into the brake pads. Alright guys, right on the side of the caliper you're going to have a little spring system like this here. 
and it's hooked in with these little tabs right here into these holes here and here. All I did to remove that was very simple. I just go in, went ahead and went and got my little channel locks here, and I put it on the back of the caliper, squeezed right through this little section here, and it pops right out. And that's the easiest thing to do. Or you can grab a flathead screwdriver, push that spring backwards toward the rear of the car, and again, that will come right off there. So put that out of the way carefully. And we also have our two bolts out right here. Same size, little washers on the end of them, and that is the caliper bolts. So with that warning, if you don't want to have any dash lights on, go ahead and order brake pads with the sensor, and also order the sensor. If it doesn't come with the pads, order the sensor separate as well. Again, all the description and links are going to be in the uh, description box below where you can purchase these products, guys. So uh, look in the description box for that. And the sensor wire is attached to the brake bleed nipple right here so you're just going to remove the little cap here and then this is going to go ahead and slide on off right there it's just a little plastic silicone piece and again mine uh, broke so no need to be careful if yours did not break then be careful remove that and then the first time I did my sensor I accidentally busted this little clip right here so I zip tied it on right here but again it just pulls out here it goes all the way up here this one pulls out and you come up here to the box, open up the little box, the tabs, folds this way, and release the uh, thing there. I'll get to that in just a second. Alrighty guys, and your brake sensor wire is the white one here. And carefully just push in these tabs here. This actually pulls out just a little bit. Be careful not to rip anything. Don't uh, mess up with this ABS one here. Those are pretty pricey. So concentrate on this one, pull it out of the box. There's little push tabs up here. Disconnect the top to this right here. Slides right out, again, being careful. Just, again, the top slides out from this bottom piece right here. Follow the line down. Again, guys, it's the lower one. Pops out the bottom here, wraps around, pops straight out like this. Um, just straight out, guys. And then, of course, mine zip tie, but you would pull that one just straight out. And again, right off the uh, the nipple uh, bleed uh, bleed screw there, right there. And there's your sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that intact, um, and probably just zip tie it up here um, with another zip tie until I get a new one, um, just so that uh, I don't get any. Uh, well, I'm gonna get a sensor, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it connected. That's what I did with when I first got the car. The same exact sensor was busted uh, when I first got the car, and you just get a little red light on your dashboard um, and um, I'll try to film that as well when it lights up so anyway for the time being let's not get that uh, bleed screw dirty so we're gonna pop on our top here right back on and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and now we're gonna go ahead and flip over the caliper and we're looking at our brake pads here guys and again look at those bad boys right there those things are worn down really silliness right there check that out so those just slip right out a lot easier than the front brake pads if you've watched my video now the now guys remember that the BMW genuine brake pads are organic which means that's that's why they kick up so much dust on your rims is because they're organic and um, whatever material they use they cause a lot of dust so anyway we're gonna take out our old pads here and again look at how worn down mine are and what's strange is that the sensor wasn't bad, but the sensor did not go off, stating that I needed uh, new back brakes. Now, being worn down that much, the sensor should have triggered. I'm not sure why. Again, the sensor was good before I broke it, and my um, dashboard did not light up. Um, so I guess the BMW thought I still had some wear left on those brake pads, which not much. I thought I was down actually less than that, but um, eh, good thing, you know. So anyway. Now when you insert the new ones, remember that the sensor, um, this is where the sensor goes in. So then you'll insert it back in like this here. So let's go ahead and take out that one there. And then this one, it might be stuck on the piston a little bit, which this one is. And again guys, we're going to get that right out, right like that. And the reason why it was stuck a little bit is there's our metal shims right there. And uh, some uh, OEM ones, they come with um, rubber shims. I'm not sure exactly if that's to deal with um, uh, sound, noise, brake squeaking, but again, this goes inside the piston. Um, so remember which one that one is, guys. The one with the shim goes inside like this, back up into the piston hole right there. That shoves all the way up, and these little tabs right here 
go right up in that little slot there and that little slot right there. So let's take out the old ones and let's go ahead and go look at my uh, my new ones here. Alrighty guys, before we look at the new ones here, now would be the time to take a nice clean rag, some brake cleaner guys that uh, I've showed you in my front brake pad video. Get that brake cleaner on and uh, go ahead and clean up this. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, uh, pad right there. Get all that off and go ahead and clean the piston right here and get all the uh, brake uh, wear, um, you know, uh, all the all the pad off of here and here. Get that nice and cleaned up. Get these edges cleaned up in through here for a nice little fit for the new pad. And uh, let's go take a look at those new pads now. And guys, this is the brake cleaner that I like to use here. CRC Brakelin Brake Parts Cleaner. Again, look in the description box below for the link for that as well. Um, this is really good stuff here. And so go ahead and clean those parts. Just read the directions. Be careful um, and read the directions before you use it. Alrighty guys, and I bought Posi Quiet premium disc brake pads and these are not BMW genuine obviously because they don't have BMW on them but um, these are supposed to be pretty legit now these ones are for the 7 series for my car uh, your car with O2s through O5s might be a little different O6s through o eight should be the same um, I believe these have rubber shims I'm trying out rubber shims this time I've used Posi Quiet on my Cadillac um, before and I really like them um, again a lot thicker brake pads guys I mean look at how thick that is compared to what mine were. Now, it also came with all this stuff here. Now, I don't need any of this stuff right here, at least um, on the passenger side. I haven't been over to the uh, driver's side yet, but uh, it did come with new springs, so that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put those new springs on. Um, right here, these uh, metal springs, and uh, so let's go ahead and open these on up, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our little gel coating for quiet braking. Um, that you saw in my front brake pad video and uh, that is right behind me let me grab that alrighty guys I take it back these are metal shims on these one the posi quiets are metal shims and uh, so you probably saw this in my front brake pad video I'm sorry about the um, totally blotched um, thing here but this is um, CRC again same brand as the brake pad cleaner I'll have the link in the description box for this stuff what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the cap and I'm gonna go ahead and put this all over the back of the pad not the pad the back of the pad all the way where it's you know this uh, metal uh, right on the edge here all the way around I'm even gonna do it a little bit on here and here and we're just gonna go ahead and touch everything now if you don't want to use this you can use the silicone gel stuff anything metal on metal that touches the piston go ahead and rub it all over there or all over here even on this one I'm gonna go ahead and just coat the back here and then just read the directions. Again, mine's a little shot there, but read the directions. You're probably going to have to have it dry for a little bit. It turns this nice silicone, and that prevents um, squeaking, metal on metal squeaking when you break the ee. You know, we definitely don't want that, guys. So I'm going to put that on, uh, show you uh, the final product of it on. Then I'm going to let it probably dry for a little bit, and then we're going to probably, uh, we're not going to probably, we're definitely going to be putting them back. All righty, guys, here we go. Here's the finished product here. Just go ahead and put a thin coat on, wear a glove, and go ahead and just spread it around with your finger here again on the metal shim here, here and here, all four pads on the back side of course. And now what we're going to do is while, read the directions, but uh, um, while we let it uh, just dry a little bit here, I'm going to go ahead and work on the um, driver's side. And uh, I'm going to keep this video a little bit short, but pretty much the driver's side is the exact same thing, minus the um, brake sensor wire so pretty much what you see in the video is going to be mirrored here on the driver's side so again uh, we're going to let that uh, sit here for a little bit and then put the new ones back on but while i'm waiting it dry here i'm going to go ahead and work on the driver's side all righty guys driver's side same exact thing minus the brake pad sensor which makes it a lot easier and so again you're going to have your two 18 millimeter bolts uh, right here and here down below, they're going to be on there really tight. And again, go through the back side of the caliper with your flathead screwdriver. Loosen up the piston there with the brake pad. Go ahead and pull that caliper on off. And we got the pads out right here. And again, the spring here, our two bolts there. And again, down in here, you're going to have a lot of grime and dust. So grab your brake cleaner, clean that piston head there. Clean the, uh, the part right here with all that brake pad dust. And I would go ahead and wipe down your rotor here, get that nice squeaky clean from all that 
where the uh, caliper was set on there. And again, don't forget the back side as well on the back side there. Alrighty guys, now let's go ahead and insert our new pads into our slots here. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and compress our piston here back into its slot fully so that there is enough room for the thickness of the new pads. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our channel locks again, just like on my front brake pad video. And what we're going to do is we're going to carefully inch it here and here and we're going to compress in the, uh, the pad here. But the easiest thing to do before we do that is we're going to slide out this little bar here. This just slides right out of these two little slots here so we can have access to that uh, the piston caliper there. Just like that right there guys. It pulls right out of the two little slots right there. Real nice and easy. Now we have a little bit more access to the piston head. You can clean that more if you'd like. But I'm going to go ahead and take my nice channel locks here. Open them to full extent. We're going to put a towel down over the piston head because we don't want to scratch that. And what we're going to do here is we're pretty much just going to pinch it like this with the channel locks all the way in. We're going to compress this rubber in. Don't rip that rubber either. Be careful. We're going to compress that in. Then slide this back into play there and then set our pads in so that they can fit on the rotor. Alrighty guys, just like this. Be careful where the back of it is pressing up against. Make sure it's metal. Here's the piston head right here, of course, and just carefully, you'll feel it go in, and just go in as far as it can there, and then we'll go ahead and put our floating uh, piece back in there, and then we'll set in our pads. Okay, and when putting in the new pads here, guys, remember that the shim goes inside the piston here, but make sure that you know the direction of where your sensor wire goes back in right there on the bottom, and so this right here, this is going to go in just like this with that facing downwards, that direction there so that the um, uh, sensor wire can go in the back side here so that just slips right on in put that inside the piston push it all the way into place there uh, putting it into the little grooves down here and here for these little notches right here and I'll be right back with you when I do that alrighty there we go there pad is nice and clean make sure you keep that pad clean here now with this one same thing again that goes on the bottom side right here so this goes in just like this and then again, just puts right uh, here on the other uh, grooves here. So let's get that guy on in there. Again, keeping our pad nice and clean there. There we go. And there we go. Right into our grooves here and here. And then that's perfect, guys. So that, now we lift up the caliper and we put it back onto the rotor. And then we're going to go ahead and put our two bolts in. And then we're going to put on our new spring. Alrighty, and I always hand tighten the top bolt first there. And so again, we're looking really good there, guys. The uh, pads are on. Look how thick those guys are compared to <laughs> compared to these ones right here, huh? And what's cool is that you guys now have some cool little red calipers. So that's kind of cool. We got some uh, some you know some uh, red goo on there like that. And uh, again, you know, if you guys don't like that look, you know, you can just do it. Uh, underneath where it touches here but I don't mind a little bit red there I'm eventually gonna go ahead and clean the whole caliper and I'm gonna probably go ahead and paint those red as well some high caliper paint maybe I'll have a video for that soon anyway now we're gonna sit in our um, bottom bolt again hand tighten first then crank her down um, German strength with uh, your breaker bar uh, or a wrench of your choice and then I'll be right back alrighty guys we have our new spring here I'm putting on if you don't trust the new spring or if your set did not come with the new spring, go ahead and use your old one. Not a problem at all, but I'm using the new one. Easiest thing to do here is start up here, here, and here. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to bend it back, put it in the holes right here. Bada bing, bada boom. You're set. Real simple, guys. Again, start here and here. It's going to be angled like this. And just slide it right back on into the slot. Okay, so we're looking good. Our bolts are tightened. We have our new spring into place. Let me show you. Unfortunately, I'm sorry again, guys, I broke this. But what you would do is if you would have a new sensor or replacing the old sensor, if you're replacing the old sensor, obviously you're all set here. You know, you don't need to do anything here. But I showed you how to disconnect it up here. And so what you would do now is if your sensor is still good, which mine isn't again, make sure that this is connected back to the bleed screw underneath the little cap here. And then what you would do you would come right back down here with, of course, the sensor facing this way here towards the center of the car. And your little sensor wire here 
would slip right into this area right here where my fingernail is, making sure it goes in all the way. And if you have a little bit of play, not a problem. Watch my freak, my front brake pad video, and you'll see exactly uh, how that plays into play. But it's real simple, guys. It would just slip right in that little notch right there all the way in. And then once the pad wears down, it will tell you how far you have to go. So guys, that's pretty much it. You saved a ton of cash by doing it yourself. So congratulations. And remember, if you need anything in this video, look in the description box below. I'll have tools and pads and brake pads and cleaners and all this sort of stuff in the description box below. You can read more about if you want to go genuine or if you want to go OEM or if you want to go posi quiet. Um, so that's up to you guys. But uh, again, uh, check that out below. And remember guys, after you do your brake job, you're gonna fire it up and you're gonna have very squishy brakes because the pistons need to reattach to the brake pad to the rotor. So when you fire it up, go ahead and just pump them a couple times. Be careful, don't floor it. You know, you might hit somebody in front of you. So just pump them a few times. You wanna get that brake fluid going. You wanna get that piston merging in. There we go, now we're getting nice and tight now. We're feeling good. Okay, guys, excellent. Let me show you because of my brake sensor. Now, this is the ABS module uh, that's giving me the trifecta, but let me go to watch. It'll come up. Give me one second. There's the um, recall for the passenger uh, <laughs> airbag sensor, so that's a video coming up. Um, and one more. We got one more. Come on now. It's going to show it. I'm very surprised. It did not come up on the dashboard, but should be over here. Let's take a look here. Well, there's my ABS module, the three one, the trifecta. The left one is the uh, passenger airbag sensor. So that's very strange. Interesting, guys, very interesting. There's the passenger uh, recall there. BMW's actually recalling my car to fix that. So even with a broken sensor, very strange, guys, I'm not getting anything popping up on the dashboard. So uh, maybe the wiring's messed up, but hey, uh, to each their own, whatever. But nothing is coming up for that broken brake pad sensor again. Very interesting. All right, guys, lastly, we just need to reset our computer to know that we have installed our back brakes. So go ahead and insert your key. Without, do not step on the gas pedal. Don't step on the gas pedal and just push it in. And that's gonna put you to your electronics, okay? And we're gonna come back up here, that's number two position in the electronics. And we're gonna come up here to our trip odometer here. We're gonna hold that in for one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. There we go, okay, now to scroll down, we're just gonna hit it once. We're gonna push that in once. And you see us starting to scroll down there. There's rear brakes right there. Okay, minus 1,000 miles. All right, so we need to tell the computer that we have installed new brake pads. So let's hold that down for one 1,000, two 1,000, okay? Then this one comes over over here. Now you push it in one more time, okay? And that's gonna scroll down to reset rear brakes because we just did that. So let's hold that down again. We're gonna hold it down and then it's gonna reset. One 1,000, two 1,000. Okay, great, reset rear brake, okay. And guys, uh, you guys have a great day, and please come over and say hello on DIYE65E66.com. You guys have a great night.